Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Everyone. So this update is for the past week and what's going on in the Yemeni front. So in this past week, since, I don't know, like December 14th, I think about four and five ships have been targeted and many shipping companies, Israeli affiliated ones and non-Israeli affiliated ones have decided to completely halt shipping around the Red Sea and to go around Africa to get where it needs to go, which adds about $1 million in fuel costs for that, for that ship to go around Africa. Not only that, but freight costs cost about 62% more. So we're talking about a couple thousand dollars more to deliver cargo, not to mention the oil and the gas and the fuel that goes through the Suez Canal that's naturally going to be more expensive. So that's putting the economic pressure on all countries, not just Israel. And Israel has lost about 80% of its traffic to the Iliad port in 80% or 80% of its revenue. Either way, it's a lot that they've lost. So this is putting the economic pressure on Israel. So economists even say that... There's no way Israel can last till January fighting this war with the economic costs mounting up the way that they are. So what does Israel want to do about it? Well, they're releasing the Epstein list and the Epstein list is going to be released in January. Don't believe me? Look at the timing. Operation Prosperity Guardian was called not that long after gay sex tapes were released about senators and Senate staffers having sex in Congress, like actually in the building, like gay sex being done in the building. And that was released to the public. After it was leaked to the public, what do we see? Oh, we're going to do Operation Prosperity Guardian now. And the pressure is on, and Israel is going to release everything that they've got, including this Epstein list thing, to kind of pressure the American government to do what it wants it to do. And the American government doesn't want to. So why is the American government not sending their Death Star and destroying the planet and destroying Yemenis and glassing them off the face of the earth, like what I hear people saying. So an aircraft carrier is a vulnerable target. Around the aircraft carrier, you have destroyers. These destroyers are holding anti-anti-ship missiles. And these anti-ship missiles cost about $2 million a piece. You're talking about one ship having about like maybe 90 missiles on it. So the Houthis are firing their ship missiles for about $25,000 max. So one drone or one missile is $25,000 to hit a ship and you're talking about a two million dollar missile to take out a twenty five thousand uh, dollar anti-ship missile that's a lot of money but someone might say well america can afford it yes america can print money but you can't print time and resources these these anti anti anti-ship missiles that america makes they can only make in make them in batches of about 300 per year that's it 300 per year is the max capacity that they make these at which means that they have a limited stock. So you're talking about one aircraft carrier with eight to nine uh, destroyers around the aircraft carrier protecting it. After 800 missiles, that's it. They're completely vulnerable. These anti-ship missiles and anti-ship drones that the Houthis are sending will not be able to be stopped. And then you're going to have a highly embarrassing situation where the U.S. might have a, a aircraft carrier, a pride and joy, damaged, struck, maybe even sunk, which is going to be a big deal. America doesn't want that. And they said, no, we don't have enough manpower. We're not going to go through with Operation Prosperity Guardian. And they called it off. Many other European countries also refused to participate. Going back to the U.S., the U.S. does care. And they're realizing that their support for Israel is costing more than it's worth. Yemen, with their feistiness and their fieriness and their belief in God and, and refusal to actually surrender, stood up to world superpowers and effectively halted all of global trading. This is going to put the choke on Israel more than anything else, more than any other country can manage. 30% of global container ship, once, once again, goes through there. That's it for today. That's my update. 